The Surfing Violinist presents The Violin Vlog, Episode 19. When you're trying to improve in a set of skills, you will be tempted to stray away from your goal by all manner of obstructions, pitfalls, and diversions. When the threshold for acceptable performance of a skill is high, one of the main temptations is to quit altogether. But equally dangerous is the temptation to let it ride and coast through with a perfunctory skill set that satisfies just enough of your potential critics and when you listen to this optimistic audience, you are lulled into a kind of imaginative stupor. Good enough is the antidote to virtuosity. But sometimes, virtuosity is just not what's desired. If you think about some of the most successful musical acts of the 20th century, Elvis, The Beatles, Bob Dylan, Led Zeppelin, pretending that any of these are virtuosic in the same sense of a Paganini or even a violinist capable of performing a Mendelssohn, Mozart, or Beethoven violin concerto, not really the same level of proficiency. Not every vocalist has the range or needs the range of a Freddie Mercury or a Mariah Carey, but that does not lessen their artistic capacity. So there's a level of performing arts fluency that is required that is above average usually, but not necessarily top tier, and I think many instrumentalists, athletes, and other kinds of performers give up before we've reached that level of fluency because we know we don't have the tenacity to get to the tip top. So starting today, I want to challenge you and me to resist two performance killers, self-indulgent sentiment and sour grapes defeatism. Self-indulgent sentiment is that little voice that sounds really encouraging. And no matter who it comes from, whether it's from an enemy or a grandmother, the effect is equally dangerous. If your imagination falls to the influence of this toxic positivity, you will be a laughing stock among your peers. Now, you might become a success but artistry will always elude you until you really examine yourself and compare yourself with the performers who inspired you. When you're dealing with skill sets that require serious reevaluation along the trek to virtuosity, you will often run into moments of relief after you've overcome a particularly difficult maneuver, mechanic, or technique. And that's when the temptation to coast becomes most acute. You breathe a sigh of relief and you set up shop on the pilgrim trail rather than soldier on to the next learning curve. Imagination is great, but daydreams can often sap your resolve when you're in the practice room wallowing in a particular ditch staring up at the next learning curve, which now, from this perspective, has taken on the appearance of the soul-crushing grade of a cliff. It's important in these moments not to lose heart and succumb to the sour grapes defeatism which loves hanging around self-indulgent sentiment anxious to prey on those with any amount of critical self-awareness when the euphoria of the daydream gives way to the harsh reality of self-examination. But today I want to offer another option other than the stoic determination to conquer the next hill, the glib acceptance of imagined mastery, or the sour grapes defeatism that prompts you to walk away. And that is, work on something else. Use that new plateau of proficiency to create something or recreate something that was not possible before. And this is where my earlier point comes back. Sometimes the level of virtuosity you're striving for is not even necessary for the type of performance you admire. Emily Dickinson's admonition to tell all the truth, but tell it slant, I think is not only a good one for poets, writers, or filmmakers, but also for performers. You're going to cross that next hill, but sometimes you require a detour first. Sometimes you need to see the next hill out of the corner of your eye, your mind needs time to work on something else actively and it can do its passive magic in the meantime. But don't be idle and don't be smug. Try using your new skills in unexpected ways. The Academy Awards is hosted by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. I think the marriage of those two terms is so important. Too often the performer has such a tunnel vision view on the science part that the art is lost and the mechanic is all that remains. But in addition to art and science, there's a philosophical component of performance. Epistemology, how individuals come to know things. For performers, this coming to know is a strange ebbing and flowing dance of observation and participation, examination, celebration, and critical clarity. So let yourself ebb and flow in this process. Just whatever you do, don't set up camp and don't walk away. Time is your friend. She looks like a threatening ogre sometimes, a harsh taskmaster, but she's on your side as long as you don't succumb to self-satisfaction or self-loathing. Godspeed on your quests. Don't give up, but don't be full of yourself. The performance of Nirvana covers at Sowall House that I mentioned in a previous vlog is now uploaded in full 
on the So Wall House YouTube channel. The link is in the description. Since the last vlog, I started a new performance that was made possible by my first violin teacher at her retirement community center. I'm trying to perform for them once a month. They seem to really enjoy it. It's been good reconnecting with Arlene. In one of my newest gigs, the client has provided a DPA D Vote 4099 core instrument mic, which is by far the best instrumental mic I've ever used in live performing situations. Beach weddings are still in effect, so I'm thankful to perform for those. Anthony Peebles is recording a new song he premiered at last year's Songwriter Festival. Weston Hine is recording for him, and I've had the opportunity to provide the violin for the song. I'll keep you updated on that one. It's a great song, and Weston has done a phenomenal job recording it. Check out Weston's channel for some of his original work. He's a fantastic musician himself. Speaking of Anthony Peebles, he posted this as a promo for one of our local gigs. Apparently, he took it years ago when we hosted him for dinner. As you can see, I'm a fantastic host. Until next time, keep practicing and performing, and let's see where music takes us. Godspeed. To see these videos early without ads, join the lineup here on YouTube. You just need a YouTube account, and for $1.99 a month, you click this little join button and sign up to get early and ad free access to four monthly vlogs the surf vlog, the masala vlog, the violin vlog, and the family vlog. Thank you very much.